we're girls like us and we're here with Amy from Ammo and the Sniffers. So would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself and the band and whatnot? Yeah, sure. Um, hello everyone. I'm Amy Taylor. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm an Australian, like I guess singer songwriter in the band Ammo and the Sniffers, um, which is kind of like just pub rock, pub punk music. Um, and we've been playing since 2016. Awesome. How'd you get started like within punk? Like how did you kind of dive into that genre? Um, to be honest, I feel like when we started, it was more like garage music. So like just any kind of noise coming from any kind of person that like was really exciting to me. So like, you know, that'd be somebody with like a bloody laptop behind them and they'd just be like screaming. I'd be like, this is fucking up. And then like, <laughs> they'd be like, you know, that'd be like three people who didn't know how to play their instruments playing the same chord. I was like, this is amazing. So I feel like that was my like Melbourne experience with it. But when I was a bit younger, um, like around 14, I went to a fair few like all ages hardcore kind of shows. Um, and I really liked that a lot. So I think that shaped kind of our live performance at least now. But yeah, honestly, it's like when we started, I just any kind of live music at all. I just really loved it. And I just wanted to replicate it and be a part of the music scene. Were you just looking to be a part of it, like, in any capacity? Or were you looking for that, like, loud, aggressive sound? Um, I feel like in any capacity, but, it, like, as just because of the person that I am and the things that I like, it just had to be kind of loud and aggressive because <laughs> I, I couldn't, I, there's no way I could write, like, a whole album that or I was, like, sitting still. Like, I can't even sit still, like, forever. So um, it just had to happen. It had to be like that, I guess. Yeah. Have you always been like really energetic? <laughs> Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, just kind of always like, yeah, yeah, excited. Always, and stuff. always moving, always moving. Yeah, like you, <laughs> yeah, because you like watch y'all live or like the music videos, and you're just like constantly like yeah. moving. And I'm like, are you tired? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just can't stop moving. I like that movie where there's the truck, but if it stops, it explodes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that's that so funny. Funny. <laughs> even that like studio sessions video that the like recent one you're still like kind of moving like you're still but it's like you're moving like like bouncing all around <laughs> all, like, like, tapping your fingers and like bopping up and down <laughs> yeah, yeah well even like probably even just like in this conversation you can see how much like I just move and like twist and, and like flick <laughs> um but yeah I guess it's like yeah so basically to go back to it, it's like I guess the music I will make will always have elements of that because that's a big part of who I am and unless there's like a big drastic change in like who I am then it'll always have to be like that I suppose um but you know it's like I enjoy softer music as well at certain points but to make it would be difficult for me yeah yeah it's almost like reflective of your upbringing though too right because you kind of grew up in like a more of like a rugged environment like kind of like gritty type yeah a bit much so yeah so it's like I grew up on like a property and like it was a bit more rough like dad was a builder we grew up in like a shed so it was like my dad built the shed and like when it would storm the rain would come in the cracks and we all shared one bedroom until we were nine while he was, he was building like another house next to the shed that was bigger and it's a beautiful house now and they've done really well for themselves um it's like made out of like all these big rocks that um that like dad would drive around in in the truck and like put um rocks in the back of it so it's like it's a fucking big house, but it's like, yeah, like half of it's built with rocks <laughs> um, that he used to like, he bought some of them, but he stole some as well. Um, and yeah, it was just like very like, it was very, I guess, like wholesome upbringing. Um, and just like, it was a bit different. Like, you know, we tried to reuse like a lot of like all the water. So it's like, you'd wash the clothes in like the bath water and then the bath, you'd use that to water the plants and like, just like real wholesome, I guess. Um, and yeah I don't know and just like it was it's 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 funny now because like I went up home recently and like obviously me and my sister don't live at home anymore and like dad's retired so he's got some like savings out of the bank and like they're finally finishing off the house and like finishing the loans and mum's got like a job after seven years of studying so they're doing really well for himself now but growing up we were like very working class and like like dad is really working class and like so it's like I've always got that attitude um where it's like you know, if I'd get like $5 pocket money, he'd be like, you got $5, but that'll go quicker than you think, you know, and then I'd get like a job and like, I'd save up like a hundred bucks or something. He's like, you think that's a lot of money, but it'll go really quick. So it's like, 
I've just got that attitude in a big way where it's like got to work and like I like it heaps because it's just so ingrained in me yeah it's definitely reflective across the music for sure it's very loud and just brash and aggressive and amazing yeah I do I listen to I listen to comfort to me when I'm working out because it just like gets me going like I have yeah. to listen to it. like when I'm like running or something you know and I'm, it's like that first song of like oh my gosh okay here we go <laughs> you can do it keep going <laughs> maybe I should record like um an album where like the interludes are like come on bitch keep going one more mile <laughs> Who has that? It's like the Nike, like the Nike training app. Yeah. Where they like talk to you as you're running. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, you should record one of those. <laughs> like yeah. a training app. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be so fucking funny, and everyone would be like, "What the fuck is that noise in my ear?" <laughs> I think we're onto something here. <laughs> so next, next big idea, right now, right now. Nice. Right yeah, now. I'm gonna lock that one away. <laughs> <laughs> so you when you started, you know, kind of as a band, you weren't really like a singer per se, like you kind of did it, you know, in bars and like just for fun and stuff. And then you kind of like gravitated into it, right? Yeah, definitely. Like I, I always really did want to be a performer in some capacity or like, you know, whatever, but I wasn't a singer. I didn't know how to sing. I didn't know how to write lyrics. Like, um, but I guess the reason that I got into lyricism and singing was because like if I was at a party or something, and would be in like the smokers area I'd be like I'd get drunk and just like freestyle rap for friends um <laughs> and then like you know like some of the boys are in other bands that would play at house shows and like while they're playing I'd be like can I get up and just like freestyle rap on a song and stuff like that um but yeah I guess it's not something I really did before um but yeah it's kind of come pretty natural I guess you know in a lot of ways um just because I'm not too fussed by other people's opinions and have a lot of thoughts floating around in my head. So how did like the band kind of form then? Like, how did you all kind of figure everyone's roles in it? Um, honestly, it was really organic. Like we all lived together. So we had a different bass player at the time, um, Callum, who we lived with. And we'd like, we'd all just fucked around at the house and we're like, we should start a house band. Like, and we should make it like the B-52s and we'll call it the 121s because that was the address <laughs> of the house. <laughs> so <laughs> when we started we thought it'd be something like that um and we just came home like I was at TAFE which is I guess like community college um studying music business at the time and and then um and then I came home and like I had a drum kit already set up in my room just like because there was nowhere else to put it and we're like oh we'll just record some songs and we're like what okay yeah all right and then everyone just picked up an instrument and um and, and everybody that was so like Bryce had never played drums before. Um, Declan never played guitar before. Um, I, don't, I, I don't think Callum's played bass before. And I don't think Gus, our current bass player, plays bass before and I had sung. So it was just mainly about spirit and fun and like wanting to be included on like playing at house shows, really. Were those songs the ones that kind of turned into your first EP? Yeah, we recorded it. So I'd just say it was a Tuesday. We got home at like four. We stayed up to like 11 writing and recording and then we put them on band camp the next day and that's how the band started. <laughs> wow. wow. We, didn't think wow. About it. <laughs> we just didn't think like we didn't, we didn't think about it or like analyze it or like I was at that time just really proud. I was like, oh my God, these are fucking songs and shit. I'm like let's put them up now. Like, <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, and you you kind of started growing pretty fast too early on like you kind of caught the attention of some pretty known people yeah it's really surprising um especially looking back and like listening to that first dp i'm like motherfucker there's a song that goes for 40 seconds <laughs> but, um, <laughs> people have short attention spans you know right? yeah. they got a little <laughs> era we're getting into it <laughs> <laughs> um nah yeah I don't it did it did take off pretty quick and like it's it's hard to even comprehend it sometimes because I mean I don't really know what's going on um but yeah it did take off pretty quickly um and that's something we really wanted but also just didn't understand um at all so <laughs> like I remember like being like oh I want to like be like successful so I'll just like email my band camp link to like two radio stations in the US and see what happens you know it's like I don't know that kind of stuff like um but yeah it, it did take off pretty quick 
Do you think having that almost like no fear attitude with everything has kind of helped? Yeah, I think, I think so. It's like, I, I guess not having like the, um, the skill of critical thinking until maybe like the last six months was like a really big benefit for the band um, and me. Cause it was just kind of like, you know, would get offered to do something. We'd have no idea how to do it. I'm just like, let's just do it. Um, and just mainly just giving it a go and, and stuff, but also just being lucky enough to have the opportunities. Cause I guess that's not something that everybody does. And I think we know that as well. It's like, you know, to have any kind of offer in any kind of way, it's like, I do just want to say yes to everything. Cause I don't know what's going to happen next, you know? And it's like, I, yeah. Yeah. We just said yes to everything basically and still pretty much try to. <laughs> what was your, like your first show as a band like? Let me think for a second. <laughs> <laughs> My, okay, I think the first show we played was at a bar called Yaya's. Um, and I, I think we played a 2 a.m. slot. This is just, I, it was slow, like, so we've been a band for six years now, so it might be, I might get some details wrong, but this is my memory of it. But it was Yaya's, so it was an upstairs venue, um, and downstairs they played like indie dance bangers, you know, like uh, like let's dance to Joy Division, like that kind of stuff. And then up, and they sold like heaps of vodka Red Bulls and stuff like that. And we played upstairs at two a.m. because they're doing like two a.m. slots, um, and I think our set went for like ten minutes because we didn't we didn't have, you know, we didn't have any songs, <laughs> um, and that's all I can really remember and I remember <laughs> I remember like so we had we had four songs as a band one of them went for 40 seconds no one had done their instrument like that before and then Declan and Bryce were both in other bands so we we're like okay well, see, well you guys have other songs in your other bands why don't we just cover two of those songs that way our set can go for at least 10 minutes um <laughs> And then I remember somebody being like, turn up the vocals. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> that's great. You like wait around all day to play and then you play for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're really like, we're like, we got to like stretch this out somehow kind of thing. And I remember then like the second gig we played at a bar called Cherry Bar and it was like a similar thing. We were like opening band. We played for 10 minutes. And I remember the guy who like was managing the bar was like, you know, bands don't usually play for 10 minutes. I don't know if I can give you like a full rider. <laughs> <laughs> just have to that kind of, Yeah, that kind of like spontaneity is like so formative for us because it's like because we only had those tiny songs and like we got stuff started happening so quick and we were only playing 10 minute sets and we're like, well, we have to write songs literally so that we can actually play sets properly. So it's like the second EP, Big Attraction, was written like for the purpose to not to at least play for like 20 minutes because all that that's only goes for like 12 minutes as well I'm pretty sure so (laughs) yeah like worked your way up to like a full set with each album (laughs) yeah yeah, exactly but the whole I guess the whole thing as well is like because Amel I think you guys call it poppers do you know poppers oh yeah 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 poppers yeah so so we, we call poppers Amel um hence the name or whatever but um it only lasts for like 30 seconds and then you get a headache so it worked out really similar because <laughs> you're like that's what our music is I guess <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but maybe you don't get the loose butthole <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you do <laughs> I don't know it depends on it depends on what kind of show it is that night I guess yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where you are what you're doing exactly <laughs> exactly that's that's awesome and like it is really reflective like across you know the band's journey and I think you know just with comfort to me comfort to me is almost like a standalone album compared to the previous albums like when reading about it and like the process it took you know to make that album it felt a little more deliberate with everything you know you kind of went in saying it's I want it to be this it's going to talk about this it's going to sound like this yeah, definitely. It was more um, considered and more, uh, I guess, yeah, more considered. And, like, I think, like, all the boys are, as instrumentalists, like, just from playing so much, it's like they really have gotten, like, we've all just come a long way from where we started. Um, and, yeah, just, like, more considered, especially lyrically, um, I guess because, like, I guess I'm just getting older, but also I've gained, like, critical thinking a little bit more and, like, 
a bit more, I don't know, I guess it's like just going through a lot of dark times changes your perspective in a big way. So it's like you do, I did, I felt like I, I had to just express myself differently. And I think that comes out um, probably in the lyrics. Yeah. And I like mm. too that there's like a delicate balance with the lyrics and like the vulnerability of it. And then you still have that like loud sound that's been known through the band. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I guess because like, uh, you know, as females, I feel like, well, I don't know. I'm just live streaming my thoughts here, but it's like as females, it's like we're expected to be really strong all the time. And like, I find myself often like the only female in like the green room or the only female you know, in the space that I'm in. Um, and it's like, we do have different experiences and it's like, I don't want to be strong all the time. And I don't want to pretend to be like the, my, like my male counterparts and just be like staunch. It's like, I want to prove that like my femininity is my staunchness and my ability to like show vulnerability and want to show vulnerability is part of my strength, not just like the actual like violence that I love and like the like anger that I feel. It's like also my like desire to be like soft and to tell people that I'm insecure or sad or whatever it is you know what I mean and not have to like not have to just be like fuck yeah everything's sweet because I'm like just with the boys and shit you know what I mean yeah do you think it can be a little hard kind of expressing those emotions in a scene that's known for being you know tough and loud and hard and all these things um I think at points but I don't find like in in terms of like lyrically, I don't find that it's difficult for me to do that. And I think it's received usually pretty well because I think people are open to hearing that. And especially, I guess, after the pandemic, when most people have been pretty introspective and pretty dark, um, I think it's more welcomed. Uh, I do feel like sometimes maybe to in conversations it would be harder. But at the same time, I don't know because it's not like I'm I don't know. It's not like I have big DNMs when I'm in the green room or anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> How was it like writing these vulnerable songs and then kind of presenting it to the guys in the band? Um, honestly, I think they were really surprised because like when we were re rehearsing, they couldn't hear the lyrics at all. They just had like this like <laughs> crazy streak, like because we were just doing it in like a shed kind of space. So it was really teeny. And like we had no idea what the song sounded like. This was the first time we ever did demos as well. Um, but the lyrics were nowhere near finished then. Um, so I think like, you know, songs like when they had Knifey, the boys all got pretty upset. I think they all got pretty emotional. Um, and they're all really supportive of like the, like the struggles of the, you know, their female counterparts and stuff. And they know how hard it can be some, sometimes for me. And they're really supportive of that, which is dope. My housemates just walking past. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, they're all really supportive of that and do, you know, try to understand as best as they can with the, you know, personalities that they have. <laughs> yeah, that's understandable too. I think like with anyone, you know, it can be a little hard finding out that the person that you're friends with or that you love or whatever it is has these emotions and these feelings and are going through these things that they might not talk about enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, they, they, yeah, a lot of the lyrics, they were kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, that's tough and that. So, yeah. Have you had anyone come up to you at all or, you know, comment or message you saying that the lyrics on this album resonate more with them? Yeah, I have um, a little bit. Like, I, I guess because, you know, during the lockdown, it's like we haven't had much real world interaction with it. Um, but a, a fair few people has had, like, I've, we played a show in Queensland and I looked out to the audience and there was like an older woman during knifey just like it looked like she was almost crying and I was like I nearly fucking cried too I was like man that hits me up so much um but yeah I have got like messages on Instagram like social media is really good for that like hearing what people think but like a couple of messages on Instagram just saying that the lyrics really resonate with them and stuff even stuff like you know the funny ones like don't need a cunt like you to love me that like people are kind of like yes bitch <laughs> <laughs> I love it so, like I love having the fun songs on there too yeah shake it up good, a little bit good balance yeah 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 exactly you gotta laugh at how fucked up everything is sometimes <laughs> yeah. yeah it's great though and I mean with this album like you guys have been a band for a good amount of time and you caught the attention early, but I feel like it was almost a slow burn in a sense. Like you were kind of still under the radar a little bit as you were gaining attention and gaining all this traction. And then once Comfort to Me came out, it just exploded everywhere. 
Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's good to hear. I, I do feel like that a little bit. But again, like I said, I, I do feel like a little bit separate because I'm not in the real world. Like I'm just on like Instagram being like, yes, like nine reshares or something. <laughs> 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 it's hard to like actually, it doesn't, I, I, like I know that it exists, but it's it's hard to know what's real, like what what it is at this stage. Like it's not, I feel like when when we get out and we start touring, which we will do this year, hopefully it's like, then we'll be like, holy shit, this is so exciting. Um, but it's hard to know what's tangible at this stage, you know. Um, but, I, yeah, it's really exciting. It's, like, it's addictive as well. It's like, I just want, I'm like, yeah, I want like, more, bigger, let's go. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, do you, like, do you ever feel like being in Australia, like, not separated in a sense, but almost like there's a disconnect between, like, other parts of the world? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, even just if you think about the, the, like the climate and stuff you know it's like if I'm in like whatever I'm like hot and sweating and then like I'm trying to like relate to somebody I'm like oh I can't do it you look so hot in that sweater like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but um <laughs> no not really that um but <laughs> but I guess like for because like even just like getting overseas or whatever so for an Australian band it is really hard to get out and over there even though like there's a lot of support internationally it's like you know visas are really expensive touring like it just looks a little bit different for us um because it's like if we need to get the flights to say just say even just america and then like the visas and like all of that shit and then also like try and afford to be on the road for that long or whatever it's like we do usually have to tour longer um and it's not as easy to just be like oh like we're gonna play one off show in london or one off show in new york it's like we have to go fucking like really hard like we've done like four months tours before we've just been on the road constantly um in april we'll be on tour for three months straight and i know a lot of bands can do that but it's just like it's almost how to survive as like an australian band because you can't just like go on the tour for a week and then go home for five days it's like you've got to commit uh, and that's my experience with it anyway um so i guess there's a disconnect in that sense um but i also i feel like there's a lot of support in a lot of ways from international people. So um, yes and no, I guess we are really far away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't just be like the Foo Fighters and pop in for a show and then pop out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, nah, <laughs> not yet. But if somebody wants to pay for that, then I would absolutely love to do that. <laughs> Maybe at one point, but not right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can see it happening. <laughs> right? yeah. 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 You, well, you were touring pretty extensively, like, early on. There was... Yeah, we pretty much toured, like, 2019 and 2018. We are pretty much on the road the whole time. And it's funny, like, I was just talking to my housemate about it, but, like, over the last two years, it's, like, I've, like, you know, experienced, like, settle settling and, like, having, like, a room and, like, being, like, oh, maybe I'll, like, you know, like, indulge in the idea of, like, buying, like, a nice coat sofa or, like, buying, like, a painting for my wall or something. But now we're going away again. It's like, I kind of have to like get rid of most of my stuff and like start from fresh. And I was just saying that it's like, you know, I'm just in my mind, I was kind of like, Oh, I'll try and like hang on to like a house and try and have like comfort and like maybe like have like a really nice space or whatever. But it's like, if I do that, then it's too stressful because it's like in between two worlds. And like, I can't pretend, I can't pretend that it's like, I live in a life because I don't. So it's like, in a way it's better to just be like, fuck everything, get rid of most of my stuff keep a tiny bit in storage and just go with it because there's no like even though I'd love to like have like a nice bedroom and like nice cups or something it's like it's not realistic so yeah it's interesting but yeah we did do a lot starting off and yeah it'll, it'll be busy again this year it's exciting how was it like with the lockdowns and everything um Melbourne had the a longest lockdown in the world I think so I think that was like I think it was like three or four months where we had an 8 p.m curfew and we couldn't leave further than five kilometers um so it was really brutal and I think yeah it's like we had I think eight lockdowns total. maybe it was like six I don't know what it was it was like six or seven lockdowns total um only just I think last Friday were music venues open to full capacity um so like it's I mean Nobody knows what they're doing in the pandemic. Everyone's trying to keep everyone safe, blah, blah, blah. But Melbourne's, were, yeah, the harshest in the world. So it was really tough. Um, and the music community has really suffered, like lots of venues struggling to stay afloat. Yeah. I saw like a someone made like a really good point that like the music, the music scene is like an ecosystem. So it's like if a couple of small venues go down, 
then it's like not as many bands can play because there's only like say a small handful of small venues so like less gigs every night less bands starting less bands getting a chance to take off like the whole thing's kind of it's just yeah it's different so how is it over there for you guys what was what was your places like it was a shit show. It still is. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're yeah. in uh, California, so. Yeah. We're in California, uh, in the United States of America. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> <I don't> know. <laughs> Nobody, no one knows it's, what the hell they're doing. Yeah. yeah. Into a political thing, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It makes, <laughs> makes it way more difficult. And then they, like, get rid of mask mandates, and then the cases go up again, and then they say, oh, wear a mask again, and then people still don't wear a mask. And then, yeah. I don't know oh, what's man. going on anymore. Especially, like, <laughs> so trying to do it, like, county by county and then, like, state by state, but, like, no one could really get on board because you would have, like, a state that was, like, democratic, that was, like, okay, we're going to wear masks, blah, blah, and the stuff, and then they would be next to a state that's, like, Republican, and it's, like, a free-for-all, so it's, like, oh, what's going on here? <laughs> it's just such a mess, though. Yeah. I think unanimously, like, it's just been fucked up. <laughs> Yeah, totally. We can agree on that. Hundred <laughs> percent. It's like, man, remember when we only said it was going to be two weeks? Here we are, two yeah. weeks later. Like, <laughs> I know, I know. It's, it's crazy. crazy. Like, I remember, yeah, still being like thinking there was like the memes about it were funny. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> We, I still like, we still get like the memes that we shared like the first few weeks. Like, there was one because it like. What was it? February, March was like lockdown, but then punk rock bowling in Las Vegas was in May. And I still oh. remember I had shared a meme and it was like me going to punk rock bowling and it was like a guy in a hat hazmat suit, suit like, at the yeah. airport. And I was like, it's not funny looking at this now because that never happened. <laughs> I like, immediately thought of that meme when you said me about punk rock bowling. I was like, yep, the guy in the hazmat suit. <laughs> oh, man. We, oh, yeah, yeah that, that one got more loaded as the years went past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been crazy. Like, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's a weird time. And, like, even, like, what you said, too, that, like, the music industry is, like, an ecosystem. Like, venues – bands like just struggled because i mean no one knew how long it was going to be or you know if it was going to get contained and i mean venues struggled but like bands also struggled too because they were still trying to practice or you know work on music and stuff but a lot of them we felt like came to this like consensus like what are we doing if we might like we might not get to play these songs we might not be able to have shows again like why are we still going to continue to do this super stagnant and like yeah like it'd be so tough for bands like trying to start out and trying to get people to listen. And it's like, there's no gigs happening and like you can't get to your friend's house to practice because you're locked down, like whatever it is. It's like, I really feel for people trying to get stuff going on at the moment. Yeah. But I mean, things I think are getting better. I don't know. I think so. The same <laughs> like it. We're having shows. And I mean, I think at yeah. this point it's kind of like a, you do what you need to do to be safe, you know? Yeah, exactly. I think, oh, shoot, when did, there was, I remember seeing like a map at one point, like someone was talking about Australia and talking about like how much of Australia is actually like populated compared to like the size of the country. And it was mind blowing. It's fuck all. There's no one here. It's crazy. And they still have the most fucked up border policies for like, a, like refugees and stuff. It's so fucked up. Um, there's so much space. You could literally like, there's just so much fucking dead space. It's crazy. Yeah. But yeah, I think to get to Sydney, which is like, so Melbourne and Sydney are like the two biggest cities. It's like, if you were to drive, it'd be like 10 hours. And then it's pretty much just like nothing else exists. Actually, that's a bit, that's a bit, that's a bit of an exaggeration. There's heaps of shit going on. But Would you say that like, those are the two major cities then like for the like punk scene in Australia? I think so. And just in general, like, yeah, I have no idea about populations and, like, maybe what I said before is offensive that it's, like, pretty much just them. But it's, like, there's, like, Melbourne and Sydney and Brisbane are, like, the three cities on the east coast. And then there's Perth, which is, like, fucking eight. It's, like, a four-hour flight away. And then there's, like, Adelaide and, yeah, they're just really they're small cities. They're, like, I don't know what you'd call them, but they're small cities, big towns, whatever. And then um they've got their own little things they got their own little scenes brewing but they are pretty small because they're just all small um so melbourne and sydney and then there's a couple of stuff going on like up the east coast just as like a surf punk kind of genre thing 
Um, but I don't know. I'm so out of touch with everything since COVID happened because there's just been no, no, nothing, you know. Or I'm just maybe there is stuff, but I just don't know about it. But <laughs> I, I was. <laughs> I was thinking about how you said when you first uh, like formed the band and it was going to be like a B-52s-esque band. Did y'all ever play like any B-52 covers or anything? No, that's the way to start. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, didn't even like go, <laughs> didn't even go anywhere. <laughs> okay, anyway, anyway. Uh, we should have, but we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, ye- like yelling like Love Shack or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like I feel that. like if we just yell love, love Shack once in a song, then maybe that counts. Yep. But we haven't even done that, so I don't know. You should just, like, at one of the shows, like, just between the songs, just yell out Rock Lobster really quick. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> See what yeah, I mean. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's cool yeah. to hear, like, how diverse, like, the scenes are. You know what I mean? Like, every city kind of has their own thing going. Yeah, essentially, yeah, like they're just different influences or whatever. Um, like I feel like, yeah, Brisbane's more kind of like, oh, I don't even know how to describe it, but I'd maybe like more skate punk. I don't know. Actually, I, I'm going to get it wrong. I'm, I'm going to cancel saying whatever I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm canceling myself. You're gonna, they're going to come after you and be like, you're a jack. I'm not skate punk. punk. <laughs> ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so who are like your personal influences like growing up and now growing up I don't know like I I really like my first couple of CDs were like Ice Cube and Slayer um and like I don't I don't know (laughs) (laughs) I don't know who who my influences were I guess right now it always changes so much but like when we first started like it was mainly just the scene around us so like you know bands like Dumb Punts just like kind of on this I guess like they wouldn't necessarily be globally like recognized but I just saw them play live at the local venue and was like well these guys are famous you know um like so like bands like Dumb Punts or whatever um that was and like Cosmic Psychos they're like an Australian pub rock band that like was a huge influence on us um Eddie Current's Suppression Ring is like a big one for most people um right now though I don't I guess it changes all the time like I don't know to be honest <laughs> But like I sonically, that, yeah. like I, I guess I listen to like heaps of different stuff. Like I really love Jungle Pussy. Um, I think she's a great performer and great rapper and great lyricist. I really like, um, I've always really loved Piss Jeans. Um, I think they're great. I really like Ceremony. Like um, I can't pronounce that, but it's Rowan Park era. Um, and yeah, that kind of shit, I guess. Nice. I saw, an, I saw an article that was talking about like the album and how you said it needed a little more hip hop in it. Yeah, well, I, that's my main influence is like I really like UK grime a lot as well. Like during lockdown, there's this rapper called Brucey e, um, from fucking Nottingham or something, and he, he has this song called Inhaler. And I just spent every night like learning lyric for lyric. <laughs> but um, I guess just like I really appreciate the phrasing, um, the phrasing and like the wording. And like this is storytelling of um of hip hop, I guess. Do you think that helped you write your own lyrics? I think so, because yeah, it's like in my mind when I'm writing lyrics, I'm like freestyling. I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, let's go. Like <laughs> 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 Yeah. I mean you can hear it in the songs too, like different elements picking up as you listen. Yeah, like probably in like snakes or like something like that, it does sound a bit more like a bit more rappy maybe um potentially yeah but I don't want to like I guess Limp Bizkit have already done that and hopefully it's got its own sonic pathway not that there's anything wrong with Limp Bizkit but you know what I mean <laughs> I'm not looking to fuse genres or anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's I mean there's a certain number of bands who do that pretty well <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the head check <laughs> <laughs> that's so great ammo on the sniffers limp biscuit tour right. <laughs> could you imagine that would be actually pretty sick that's i'd go <laughs> do this <That's> insane. <laughs> yeah that'd be pretty fucking fresh actually god i like it 
write it down. <laughs> I think that's down. another one. Yeah. We talked about like the yellow jacket stuff like before we introduced you and stuff. So we'll like talk about it again. But like, do you want to talk about like the process and finding out that Juliet Lewis was gonna wear your shirt? And stuff? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Basically, um, yeah. As I mentioned before, it's like. I don't know how Juliet found us or came across us, but she's obviously a musician too and Juliet and the Licks. Um, so I guess she's got, she just has, a, she's, I think she just loves music. Um, but so I'm like milking every little last bit of our Instagram friendship until we met a lot in real life. But she just hit me up being like, I'm, I'm going to be in this new TV show. It's called Yellow Jackets. Like I think my character would wear one of your shirts. Like do you reckon I could have a couple? And I was like, yes. And then it just continually got more exciting until we saw the picture. And then I was like, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty exciting. Did you did you watch the show when it came out? No, I haven't actually watched it yet. But to be honest, I'm not I, I struggle watching like TV series. Um, so um, but I'm keen to see it. I've heard good things. It's a really good show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. We were addicted to it. <laughs> I, I want to give it a crack. Maybe when winter hits here, I'll, I'll slide into it. Yeah, but like we, um, we would like see her comment like on the band account and your like personal account, like, and it's so cool to see because like she's like a rock star too, you know, and like it's cool to see like high profile like celebrities and stuff like still kind of in it and like they know yeah you know, all these different bands. I, I think she just gets genuinely excited, you know, as like as most people who love music, like she just gets really excited by like things that she thinks are interesting. And like, she just seems genuinely passionate about like music and like performing. And like, she just seems like she like breathes it and loves it and lives it. Yeah. She, she's a total rock star too. And I mean, we, we can kind of see the parallels too, between like your like on stage performance and like hers, like you both kind of have that like really high energy and like the outfits and like all these different things too. So it's really cool. Yeah. To see. Uh, I'd love to meet her one day. That'd be so cool. <laughs> if you play in LA, she might come out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she, she lives in LA and I, we always see her like. That would be stories fucking awesome. Oh, that's, that's such so a cool. cool idea. Yeah, that'd be awesome. God, that's, I mean, that's exciting, though. Like, I mean, you guys have done so much, like, through the through the start of the band, but just even, you know, with this album alone, like, have accomplished so much and just covered so much ground with it. It's really cool to see. Thank you. It's really exciting, yeah. The shows look like they've been so much, so much fun so far. Yeah, so far they've been great, and and. It- yeah, it's been like I feel like there was a long time when our audience was mainly just like um like older dudes and now it seems to be like pretty diverse and that's really exciting to see. Um so I think that that that's yeah, it's been that's been really nice. Um and everyone's just full of energy and, and like just keen to live life after like two years of not living it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting to the States and seeing everybody over there. Yeah. That'll be fun for sure. And I mean the mm-hmm. album has done so well here too yeah but yeah we were we were seeing the album like your album on everybody's top albums of the year at least like over here oh that's so good to hear that's fucking exciting i was gonna ask like you already mentioned some of like your like hometown favorite bands that had inspired you anybody like from australia right now that's like up and coming or have been doing really well that you're like fans of that we Let should check out or yeah um I, like I said I've been a bit out of the loop of like um Australian music just because of the whole pandemic and live shows and everything there's a band from Sydney who I really love they're one of my favorite heavy bands in Australia um they're called Coffin um um there's a band in Atlanta which isn't obviously Australia called Upchuck who I really like um and we're gonna tour with both of those bands when we come to the states um who else is there there's a band called Concrete Lawn I really like them. Um, I can't think of many. I'm too out of the loop. <laughs> I don't know. What's going Perfect. On. <laughs> Those are great. Those are great suggestions. They're great. <laughs> That'll do. Yeah. That'll do. That's great. There's, 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 there's a whole like yeah. There's a thriving music scene down here. There's a band called um, Blonde Revolver. They're really good. Um, but yeah. 
what do you hope people get from like this album and like listening to your music? Like, what do you want them to kind of take away from it? Um, I honestly don't know. Um, sorry, there's just a lot more going fast. Oh, wait a second. Um, <laughs> I guess I just want, I just want someone to feel anything really, or like, you know, hopefully it makes them feel excited or maybe feels, um, I feel like in hard times, sometimes you just need to be reminded that like, yeah, stuff's really tough, but just laugh at it and like, don't take it so seriously and like make the most of the, of the hard time and, and, you know, don't let it rule you. So that'd be nice if some songs in there was like, it was like a powerful sadness rather than like a defeated, um, defeated sadness. That would be nice. Um, but honestly, I'm not too sure otherwise. <laughs> That's a good answer. That's great. Thank you. If you were to, if you were to, um, like, if someone came to you and was like, "What song should I listen to to, you know, figure you out? What songs would you pick of yours?" I'd pick "Don't Fence Me In." I'd pick, um, I'd pick, yeah, "Don't Fence Me In." Maybe "Knifey," and then maybe "Snakes." Nice. Those are good ones. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> exciting awesome do you want to um like plug the band social media and like where people can find you and all of that um yeah so you guys can find us on um just like i'm on the sniffers instagram it spells like how it sounds pretty much uh and then uh yeah you can do just type that into google and and the music will come up somewhere along the lines so that's where you can find us and also if you'd like to come to our live shows please please come along awesome that's awesome well thank you so much thank you for doing this. like this was amazing thanks for thanks for inviting me on and thanks for having me and um yeah